On New Year's Day, I convinced my wife that I was taking her out for a cup of coffee, but instead, I actually needed her to help me film this. I want to point out that Sunlu sent me this resin to test and I'm not gonna lie, it's actually really good. The price you pay for the quality of resin and the details that I'm getting out of this resin is totally worth it in my opinion. If you want to check out Sunlu, there will be a link for their website in my description down below. Also Sunlu said that they will give me two 1kg bottles to give out to my lucky viewers. And the way I figured I'll do this is I will pick one from the comments and one from my Patreon. I think that's the fairest way to do it. Just remember this is the internet. Don't send your information to anybody asking for your information, especially payment details. Once I've picked the winner at complete random, I will get in contact with you and uh, all I need from you is your shipping address and Sunlu will take care of the rest. Recently, I've been using the Citadel Spray Primer for priming my models, and I'm not gonna lie, this is a really easy way if you're lazy and don't feel like setting up a compressor. Or if you just can't afford a compressor, but I've used these spray paints with great success for at least two models now. I used the white, which is called Corex White, to paint over the top of my black to create a zenith or highlight. And now it is Spider-Man, so of course, the only thing I'm gonna need to paint him is red. I'm gonna use white ink as well as yellow. Imperial Fist contrast paint mixed together in my airbrush to create a very bright yellow to spray over the top of all of the red parts on the suit. And of course, this looks ridiculous, but this is gonna help the layers that we add on on top of this. The next layer of paint is going to be a Magma Droth Flame. It's also a contrast paint from uh, GW. The reason I use these contrast paints is because they're a little bit thinner and they're actually a little bit more see-through than normal paints. Not completely all of them, but some of them are, and the ones that are are really useful to use in situations like this. And now I'm going to use a mix of the orange, the yellow, and the white, using very little white, only just to lighten it ever so slightly, and I'm going to spray this over the highest points of the highlights. This is to create a nice contrast between the deepest red and the brightest, lightest orange on the top of the highest of the lights. And then I'm going to spray a clear lacquer coat all over the model. This is to protect it for the next layers that I'm going to be doing on top of this. I'm going to work on the base now and I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia to just spray over my zenith or highlight that I'd sprayed on and this is mostly just to tint the surface of this model. 
Next, I'm gonna look for my oil paints. And I'm doing this now because I need a lot of time for these paints to dry. It helps to do this in the early stages. You need to make sure that you use a really, really terrible old brush that you don't care about for this. Because for some reason, the oil paints and the white spirits and stuff that you use can damage your brush. And you're gonna have a bad time. I mix a load of this white spirit into one of the dish container things and I mix in brown and black oil together. I don't want this to be pitch black, I want it to be slightly more like a dark brown. And then I'm going to very carefully place this into all the cracks and crevices where there is a line on Spider-Man's suit. I'm not going to lie, I stopped being careful after a while, but you can come back and fix this up with a soft sponge or a Q-tip. I then dry brushed the skin tone over the top of everything and the reason I used the skin tone was because if I used white it would not look very good. So I used something that had a bit more colour in it. I'm then going to spray a little bit of a bluish grey into the shadow areas of this base. And before I do that, I'm actually going to just dry and make sure that everything is dry on top of it. And then I'm going to spray this straight onto the bottom of the base at an angle. And this is going to create some of the shadows for me. I'm then going to work black over all the pieces of venom that are coming out of the building. For his suit, this one I wanted to make sure it wasn't just a blue Spider-Man suit. So I wanted to put a little bit more black into the blue. I still mixed blue and black together to get this color, but basically it's more black than it is blue. And I'm going to spray a highlight on top of that later. For his symbol, I used flat matte black from Vallejo. This video was sponsored by Epic Prop. Epic Prop has a Patreon where you can get STL files for some of your favorite characters based on popular culture. They produce one to two models a month with instant access to a welcome package upon your first sign up. To support those who support the channel or just to get some cool files for yourself, then check in the link in the description for the link for Epic Prop Patreon. Once I was done with all the venom, I went on to working on the blue parts of the suit and I used a very bright blue and I just thinned this down and very carefully sprayed this over the highlights on the muscles of the suit. This is something you don't want to do too much of, you don't want it to become blue, you just want to spray the highlights blue. And now that all the black on the venom is dried, I'm going to go in and make it look a little bit more gooey. And to do this, I'm going to use a gloss varnish. The one from Army Painter is just good enough to do exactly this. You want to be careful to not get this onto any other parts of the suit. I probably should mention that before I did this layer, you actually needed to make sure you put a matte layer over all the rest of the suit that you had cleaned up earlier. And then I gave the same attention to the body, the torso section with the blue by spraying it very lightly over the muscle areas only. Then it was time to work on those wonderful lenses. And I start out with a very light gray. And this is just to give a base tone for everything. I need to just make sure it's not red underneath. And then I do a wet blend. Now a wet blend is something that everybody can do. It's super easy to do and it creates a very, very cool effect Especially if you've never tried this before, just try smushing two wet paints together and see what it looks like for your own self. I'm then going to use very thinned down versions of grey, dark, light and uh, bits of white to work into the lenses of this uh, spider boob man. Once I've got the lenses how I want them to look, I'm going to go over the edges with black and when I've got the black down exactly where I want it to be, I'm also going to give a white highlight on the inside of those lenses. Next, it was time for me to work on the symbol that's on his back. I'd already painted this with white. Obviously, it doesn't look white, but because it's going over the blue, it doesn't really matter. It just makes sure that there wasn't blue for the red to go over the top of. 
Once I'd got a flat piece of red going over that symbol, I painted it with yellow and I did two or three layers of this. I used yellow first, allowed that to draw and I put the orange over the top again and this was just to create a gradient across the symbol. And as I was finishing this model, I thought to myself, there was something I could add to it. And I felt like to create a little bit more of the chaos that is in this piece, I'm going to add a wanted poster. One of the newspapers from one of the Spidey books, there was a reward for photographs of Spider-Man. We all know Jonah Jameson wants uh, photos of Pete, but he doesn't know it's Pete. He just thinks it's, you know what I mean. So I felt like I would just print these out and I'm going to cut out tiny little pieces of what looks like tape which is actually just really tape and I'm gonna paint these pieces with a little bit of seraphim sepia wash just to make them look old and worn and weathered I also tore off one of the corners and I stuck this on the side of the model I put two of them on one on the one side and one in the front just so that it looks like they were torn off and uh, it gives a bit more life to the piece at least in my opinion and once I got those pieces stuck on that was where I called this model done And now we have come to the end of the video and I hope that this video gave you some insight into how to paint your own Spider-Man if you got this one or any other Spider-Man in the future. Perhaps you might use some of this information on something that isn't even Spider-Man. I want to thank everyone who watches the videos for their support and speaking of support I want to thank my patrons as well. That's right I have a Patreon and that is where you can support me as an artist in creating the videos that I create. But that is not all you also get access to the private discord where you can speak about 3D printing, painting and all things that come to do with modeling. And it is at this point that I would like to thank the new patrons we got this week. John Pinter, Diego Rosca, Malise, Josh Anderson and Timothy Carpenter. Thank you my dudes for keeping these lights blinding my eyeballs because without your support there probably wouldn't be any videos. Now enough of the shilling of the personal things. Let's just get to the best part of every ground affected video. And that is when I get to tell you if you didn't like what you saw in any of these videos, the best thing I can say to you is to just cough. Thank God I've been holding that fart in the whole video. <laughs>